article, I think it's a abbreviation for our structure, carry language, right? Yes. And it's used for uh, action for database. Everything that you want to do with your database, that uh, it's like a language to do with that. Yes, so that's basically what SQL is. Anyone else who wants to share what they know about SQL in databases? Anyone else? The number seems to be dropping instead of increasing. I was hoping for it to increase. Yes, Sam, Sam Nakale. You are muted. We can't hear you. Yes, um, I do have some experience with MySQL, which is a structured, uh, it uses uh, the SQL language, uh, the structured query language, and then also you mentioned Firebase, which is a NoSQL, uh, JSON kind of database. Yes. Okay, I think I'll get two more. Leticia, then your hands, then we can start uh, the tutorial. So Leticia, go ahead. Okay, what I, I understand on database that it's a way of keeping your data, maybe local, or you can also put it on, keep it on different platforms but it's where you keep your data in tables. You arrange data in tables, that's what I'm doing. Okay, thank you, Leticia. Your hands are final. Okay, thank you, Anastasia. So when we say database, it's all about uh, a way of storing uh, our data. Uh, could be structured and structured, but uh, since we are talking about SQL, it's basically uh, structured data. So uh, SQL is a structured query language. We used to uh, define our data, uh, creating the schema in the tables, the database. And then there is this DML data manipulation language, which is mostly the select command, so that uh, we go around our data, we can uh, manipulate it. Anyway, so most of the time, the data engineering thing uh, is done in the DDL, but the DML focus on the manipulating the data for uh, lots of businesses. And then we have another also called transaction control language, data control language, way of giving privilege and revoking that. That's my understanding about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Johans. Uh, Vital, is it another contribution or a question? Vital? A contribution. Okay, just a final one so that we can uh, start and finish the tutorial. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what I know about this SQL is that it's a database where uh, yeah, many companies use it to, to store data which can be structured and unstructured. And it's also used to learn what is that um, uh, if they are unstructured, they are, it has some features that help us uh, and help people to make them structured. And then you use it also to do some analysis from data stored there. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for contributing, just sharing a little bit of what you know. So that's what our tutorial today will be about. It will be just about databases. We'll look at the differences between uh, what is a SQL database, what is a NoSQL database. We'll look at the schema, just at the general structure, and then we'll go through a code base to create one database using Python. So I'll start. Uh, we have 54 in the chat, so I think I'll just start because of time. Oh. 
okay i hope you can see my screen now so i'll just go directly to databases So there are mainly two technologies used in uh, database today, uh, the SQL databases and the NoSQL. So uh, SQL, as Rafa said, stands for Structured Query Language, and NoSQL is just basically NoSQL. It's not that, that it's not structured, but uh, the main difference as we look ahead is that SQL is mainly relational uses tables and NoSQL does not. It's not relational. That is the main difference between these two technologies. So first and foremost, what is a database? A database, it is an organized collection of data stored and accessed electronically from a computer system. So all the data you've been working with uh, this week, we had the Twitter analysis, uh, Twitter, no, the economic Twitter data. The end you'd need to store that for easy access to the other members of your team and uh, for storage that's where databases come in and uh, that is basically what uh, database is so there are two types of databases no not just two there are many but i'll go through two a relational database and a cloud database a relational database is made up of a set of tables, procedures, and triggers with data that fits into a predefined category of schema. So the main thing in relational database is that you get to connect two tables so that one table is uh, related to another. For example, if you've uh, if you've done, uh, we will look at, into this bef uh, later. But if you've done uh, SQL, maybe even Access, Microsoft Access, you can have one table of customers and one table of orders, and then the two tables can be can be related with a foreign key. That's basically how relational databases work. And some of these uh, relational databases are my S MySQL. Uh, we have Postgres, we have MS uh, MySQL Server, and we have SQLite. For today's tutorial, we'll go a little bit deeper into my SQL. The rest you can just do with your time, or I think uh, Postgres you can look uh, or maybe SQL it during the program. So another type of uh, database we have is the cloud database. And uh, this is a database that typically runs on a cloud computing platform. And uh, for example, if you've heard of uh, AWS, AWS is, uh, it is uh, huge right now. And it is an example of a cloud database, and we also have the MongoDB. So, I, as I said before, we have these two technologies, SQL and NoSQL. And uh, SQL, it is a standardized programming language that is used to manage relational databases and perform various operations on the data in them. If you notice between these two databases, whether we say SQL Server, MySQL, uh, the other one was uh, Postgre, all of them, they use one specific language. It is a standardized language for all the relational databases, structured query language. When you go to NoSQL databases, you'll find that they may have different um, different programming languages used. You might find like uh, the 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 vendor like MongoDB, the language they use is slightly different from something like uh, maybe Dynamo. Uh, NoSQL will vary, but all the relational databases use uh, this specific language called SQL. So NoSQL, on the other hand, is a database designed to be used across la uh, sorry across large distributed systems. They are notably much more scalable, much faster at handling very large data loads than traditional relational databases. So apart from the fact that uh, NoSQL is not relational, the reason as to why NoSQL actually came up in the first place is uh, when dealing with distributed systems and uh, you have to work from uh, multiple areas, SQL can actually be challenging and uh, NoSQL actually deals very well with these uh, distributed systems. That's one of the reasons NoSQL uh, came up and uh, I think just the way NoSQL has been made and the fact that it is not relational, it is uh, the performance, it can really have high performance in a distributed case and um, yeah, it is highly scalable as well. So we'll just go through a few advantages of each. 
advantages of SQL databases. It's stored data in a highly structured tabular form with multiple rows and columns. You can also say maybe it's easy to understand. When you look at a table and it's just columns and rows, that's easy to understand. I think that's what we've been uh, interacting with for most of our lives, so it's easy to understand. It is also highly flexible and easy to maintain. They are effective for data stored on a single server. This is what I said about uh, the distributed systems. So if you're actually using uh, just one server and uh, everything will be running from one location, SQL can actually work really fine for you. But if you want to do a big uh, project and uh, you'll be you'll have distributed systems, SQL might be might prove to be challenging. So the disadvantages, uh, it's also been noted there, they do not scale very well on a distributed system and they are relatively expensive, especially if you are doing more than one. Because if you want to do distributed, you might have to set up a number of uh, a number of stations. Okay, so for NoSQL, advantages, it uses inexpensive storage and processing power. It has, av it has high availability and speed. It works significantly better across distributed systems. I've been saying this. It provides higher level of flexibility with newer data models, and they are often open source and therefore lower cost. At this advantage, it is difficult to maintain. So I'll just give an example of, um, I don't know if this will do this later. Ah, okay, so it's down here. So, so far, uh, okay, sorry, sorry. I've said an example of an SQL database. It just stores things in tables. So the database uh, in SQL, you might find it in tables listed, and then a table is simply just the normal table we know. NoSQL, on the other hand, there are three, three or four. They can use three or four types. We have the document model, which can be stored in uh, maybe JSON files. The data, instead of being in tables, they're being stored in JSON files. We have the graph model, which uh, references the entire data from one node. An example of this kind of model is uh, Facebook, where we have a friend having many friends and uh, that friend has other friends. So it's basically from one central node and then there are other partitions uh, from that node. That's how graph model looks. And then we have the key value model so key value relationship is like the one we have in dictionaries where we have a key and a value and to access the value, you can access any value using the key. So that's why we have this example of NoSQL up here that looks um, more of uh, like a JSON file. So, so far, any questions before I proceed of, uh, between NoSQL and SQL? Let me just... Any questions so far? Are you with me? Can I continue? Yes. Yes, DJ? Yeah, let's continue. Oh, okay, Nijist, Nijist, you have a question? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I was having a network problem. So can, can you go through the cloud one? The data ah, okay. storage type, right? Yeah, I didn't say a lot about the cloud one. It's basically just a type of database. Instead of store, instead of storing your data locally, you'll be storing it in a cloud-based uh, environment. So maybe a company like Amazon provides the servers, the storage, uh, all the necessities you need to run uh, a database. A company like Amazon will provide that. So we have AWS then they give you a section of, uh, of their platform and you use that as your storage. So that's basically how cloud works. But in the relational database, you may, you may need to have it set up locally on your, on your machine. Is that clear? Just... Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, any other question before I continue? Yes, Musa, oh, Musa. <laughs> Yeah, um, so Anastasia, maybe just to add, I think uh, these days they are able to have uh, SQL databases on the cloud. Uh, so I think uh, AWS has something called Aurora, which is still a, a, a SQL database, but they're hosting it on, on the cloud. 
So it, it is possible. Oh yeah, we were just, I think we were just talking the difference between a relational database, which are you, oh no, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Musa. <laughs> so any other addition, any other question before I continue? Okay, so I'll uh, continue. Uh, the next thing we will be tackling is a uh, schema, databases schema design. And uh, what a schema basically means is uh, the structure, the structure of the database. So that is uh, in, in simple terms, a schema is the structure of a database. So yes, a database schema is the skeleton structure that represents the logical view of the entire database. It uh, defines how the data is organized, how the relations among them are associated. So even in SQL, uh, it formulates all the constraints that are to be applied on the data. Like for example, when you're doing a schema for a relational database, you might say this is the primary key, meaning it cannot repeat it. This is the foreign key, which connects to another table. This is, uh, we will have this uh, field called uh, created at, which is basically a date time. You should not uh, get anything else apart from date time. So that is just uh, in, in, without adding the data, a schema just describes what the database will hold. So it can broadly be divided into two categories, a physical, a physical database schema and a logical database schema. So in a physical, this schema pertains to the actual storage of data and it forms of storage like files, indices, etc. It defines how the data will be stored in a secondary storage. Maybe you have it uh, physically, literally physical database schema. Then a uh, logical database schema, it, is, uh, it defines all the logical constraints that need to be applied on the data stored. It defines tables, views, uh, procedures, and integrity constraints, like what I was saying about the primary case, foreign case, uh, data types for each uh, row, you know, for each field column. Yes, that's, that's the one. So that is basically what a logical database schema is and how they they are different from the physical schemas. The difference between a physical and logical schema, a logical schema will have attributes. Attributes are basically, are basically fields, columns, but a physical schema will not have. And uh, both logical and physical schemas have primary and uh, secondary keys. A primary key is basically a key that cannot be repeated. It's unique. A secondary key can be repeated. Uh -huh. Then we have uh, table names. So in logical schema, you don't necessarily have to say the name of the table, but in physical schema, you need to give a table name. Then the column names and data types. A logical schema does not have, I'm not sure about the data type, uh, okay. But uh, the physical schema has the column names and data types. Okay. So an example of an SQL database schema is this. If you've interacted with Microsoft Access, you can actually create this. What we have uh, as tables, maybe uh, the different tables, sorry, sorry. These nodes may be the different tables that we have in our database. The topmost uh, row is the name of that table and then like here we have code tp0 these are the columns the columns that will be used uh, in this um, in, in each specific table then the connections you can see between the two tables that's what we call the relations and we can have a one-to-one -one relation example down here we can have a one to many you can see here we have one table connected to many and uh, we can have a many to many i don't know if there's many to many here Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know if there's many to many in this specific structure, but those are the type of uh, relations that you can have between uh, tables. Okay, so I think we'll just go to defining. Yeah, I think that's it. We will go to defining, uh, we will be using MySQL. We will go to defining a database schema using MySQL and I want to switch to code. If there's any question up there before I switch to code, 
you can ask now before I switch because I will, it will get a little bit more practical. Okay. Skip. Any questions on schemas? Okay, so I'll just continue. And uh, we've left at uh, defining a MySQL database schema. So if you've interacted with SQL before, the SQL language, we have these uh, specific uh, queries that run. The create, I think, uh, create, update, uh, delete. Uh, it's basically like if you just want to access anything in, uh, if you want to access anything in uh, a SQL database, it's just select all from. It's it's simple. It's like pseudocode. If you've not learned SQL, it you should uh, you should uh, look at it. So we look at this uh, database schema. I want to look at something that uh, we can relate to the Twitter data. I want to look at one specific schema here. So I don't know if you can see, should I increase the font? Is that visible? Someone, is that visible? Yes, it is. Yes, it's visible. Okay, so in uh, in uh, SQL, and uh, we are focusing on my SQL, uh, creating a schema is simple. Just say, use the words uh, create, table, if not exist, with information. This is used to check first if the table exists in the database, so that if it does not exist, it creates. If it already exists, then it just goes on to do the column so in here we define uh, the columns the columns we'll be using so we have the column name we have the type uh, the data type that will be needed for that column these are from here this are this is a constraint and not now basically says that this field cannot be null that's what not null means then we have auto increment since this is an id it will even most likely not be passed anything. Auto increment just means uh, any time there's an additional row, it just adds. So it'll start from one and it will auto increment forever. Yeah. So that is the structure. The structure for the for the columns, the name of the column, the data type, and uh, any constraint you want to add. So you can see here um, we have more constraints. Like we have the default being null. So if there's no data, you just give a default uh, a null value. Uh, we also have uh, another constraint, uh, I think, in here. So when we have a place like this, column says place coordinates. Uh, VACA is an example of another data type. 100 just specifies the length, the length that uh, that data type can hold. So if, for example, you are doing a, a, a field of uh, phone numbers, and maybe in your country, phone numbers cannot be more than 10, you can just put this value to 10, and uh, the 11th value will not be uh, acceptable for that specific field. So we did say that you have to provide primary keys when it comes to relational databases. And that's why at the end of this schema, you have to specify of all these columns, which one is the primary key. That's why we have this line, primary key. Then you put the name of the column. So I think here down here, we'll just be connecting to, this is where now we specify we are doing a MySQL, we are connecting to MySQL and in what uh, format, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's all. So this is basically how you do a schema in uh, SQL. I'm not sure about no SQL, because today we'll be doing MySQL and us to focus on the schema for MySQL. Is uh, this part clear? A uh, question. Okay. Yeah, uh, was uh, that faith? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, could you please uh, repeat on uh, engine? Engine, I know DB. Okay. So 
I'm not quite sure what that line does, but I think it's where it now connects to the MySQL server on my local on my local um on my local computer. Mm. Yeah. Because when you're actually doing uh, maybe if you're connected to something like MySQL server and you're doing this schema directly directly on my skill server you'll just need to do the schema up to here but since i don't want us to go directly and do it on the graphical user interface we'll be doing it from code so this line specifies to which server i will be connecting on my machine thank you okay there's another question daisy daisy you can go ahead Daisy, Daisy or Kacha, are you okay? Daisy, if you are talking, we can't hear you. Okay, so I see. Hakiz, Hakizimana had a question on uh, on the messages about incrementing. I hope you've been answered and that's clear. Vital. Yes, yes, it's answered. Thank you. Okay. So I'll just continue to the code base. Directory for the file. This you are asking about the folder with these uh, files. It's in uh, the Friday folder, the Friday folder. So everything I'll be going through today is in the Friday folder. OK, so like uh, even the coding, even the coding is in the Friday folder. Is that okay, Daisy? Okay, sure. So next we'll be going through the code and the code in the Friday folder that I'll be using is the add data dot py. The schema we've just gone through is the SQL file on the folder. But uh, if you want to follow through, you can go through, you can uh, open add data dot py. That is the coding folder for today. So uh, it might be a little bit hard for you to follow through if you don't have some prerequisites installed. To run that folder, you need to have my SQL server already installed on your machine. You also need to have uh, on your environment, Anaconda environment, you need to have uh, MySQL connector also installed. So I can just share a few files on uh, where you can do uh, this too. You just need to do, you need to download uh, MySQL. Actually, there's a simple tutorial I was following on uh, on setting up MySQL on your machine. This is for Windows users. I'm sorry, other users, I can't help much. I'm on a Windows machine. But uh, the, YouTube to, the YouTube link I've sent that will guide you step by step on how to install MySQL server on your machine. I, I, think, uh, I think the guy also gives a link on uh, where to download the installer. You we will also need uh, to do the MySQL connector. This can be done from Anaconda directly or from uh, Anaconda prompt. So one thing uh, you need to note is that MySQL supports Python uh, 3.8 and below. So if you are running Python 3.8 and above, no, it's actually supports 
below 3.8. So even 3.8 is not supported there uh, with uh, MySQL. So if you are running a higher version of Python, you need to set up an environment. And then in that environment, you install a lower version of Python, maybe Python 3.7, and then you can install, then you can do the MySQL connector on that environment. I hope that's clear because that's important. You'll get a lot of errors without having the right Python. I hope that's clear. Okay, so after now we have our MySQL server uh, installed on our machine. When you open the MySQL, it looks something like this. The the application, but uh, we won't be creating anything from the application. We just needed the the our passwords, our username, so that we can connect directly. And uh, when you do an environment, I did an environment. I did an environment. I created a MySQL environment, and in this environment, I did install MySQL connector. My SQL connector. Yes, my SQL connector. So if you do an, an environment, also remember to add other libraries that you just need, like pandas, especially for this specific file, you will need pandas. So that's something else to be on the lookout for when you have uh, errors. So with our environment set and we have our server, you can go now to the file. I opened mine with a spider. You can do with VS Code. So I just did mine with Spider. And uh, this code is basically just connecting, connecting to uh, my SQL database and uh, adding data, data to that database. So I'll just take you through the code uh, immediately uh, faster, faster. So you just import libraries have operating system, pandas. This is where we import the, this is the connector, MySQL connector, where you install and then you import MySQL. So connecting to the database, you just need a database name. When you connect, you give it a host. So since you are using our machine, this that's why it's local host. The user, which will be set when you are installing, um, installing mysql this way we have the user and the password i did set mine to be just uh, no actually the user is uh, comes automatically as root you can also add other users but the main one is root and i did set a password for root which is also just root so the database name that you want to create this is the function we'll be passing uh, the name the argument will be passing to this function database name and then uh, we open our buffer as true so you just do a CASA, we open a CASA, which a CASA helps us uh, create the connection successfully. And then from this, from this function, we just return a successful connection. What CASA helps us do is uh, run, is run uh, MySQL commands. I hope that's clear. So next, um, Okay, so here we're just running a query, and you can see what we are doing is we are alting, alter, okay, altering, alter, okay, this database, and uh, we are just setting. You notice that we did set this on our, we did set this line on our schema. So an alter, what it does, it even if it exists, it just alters it to some. That is one of the comment. What's one of the commands we use in SQL? In addition to create, delete, update, we also have alter. And like I said, CASA is used to run any query on the database. And we would need every time we do every time we do a query, we need to call the connection and then commit our query to that database. So we will be doing the connection and commit a lot in this uh, file. So then we have create database. Again, you do a connection in the CASA also needed and then we execute create database if it does not exist the database name that we need same as the other schema we did for a table this is now for a database and uh, same thing commit and then close the connection and then we create tables so you did notice that we had already done 
we had already done the tables externally on our file. The schema I had just shown you. Let me just see. Mm -hmm. This one, we already done a, a schema of our tables. So in this, in this function, we'll just be calling that file. This is the SQL file we will be calling. So we do open this SQL file. It's a SQL, the same way we open JSON. And then we read the file and uh, we run the command. So since uh, our, um, any question? I can hear some background noise. Any question? Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you get back to the? Can you get back to the first line, please? Which? Just a minute. Uh, Visual base code. Which line? The first line. At the beginning, completely. Yes, uh, here in the uh, username and password. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, user root and password. Do we give, uh, substitute it to our uh, database username and uh, password? Yes, when you do the installation of the yes. MySQL, there's a place where you will set your password so you can just substitute them here. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Okay, so if there's no other question, I'll just continue. Where were we? Okay, we were on uh, creating the tables. Since our table is in multiple lines, that's why we are using a uh, follow-up. And uh, we are executing it line by line. Okay, hope that's clear. Then uh, we can pre-process now our data, data frame, the one that we want to add to our... Um, to our database and uh, this uh, function just takes in a data frame and gives it a data frame we are we are doing is that we will be dropping like in this specific case we are just dropping some columns you might have other things you want to do to the data before feeding it uh, into the database in this case we will just uh, be dropping a few columns we'll be dropping their named column the index column uh, timestamp sentiment and uh, possibly sensitive original text you can add uh, others you can remove if you think it's impossible it's it's uh, it will be helpful for your data you can also add other pre-processing uh, methods on uh, this function and uh, it's this is just a basic basic uh, python function just drop the columns then we insert our data frame now down that has been cleaned we insert our data to the tweets table, which we have created. And what this does, it takes the database name, it takes the data frame and the table name, and it does not return anything. All it does is just inserting. So again, because we will be running a SQL query, we open the connection and the cursor, and we connect to our database. Uh -huh. So what you want is whatever data frame is passed into this uh, into this function, you process it. And in our case, it's just dropping columns. In your case, it could be a number of things. And uh, we will do this row by row so that for each, we run an insert statement. So again, like the create, the alter, the updates, we also have an insert statement, which is just insert into table name. And then you do the column names, and then you do the values. So insert into these column names, you, we had already defined them in our, in our schema. All these column names have been defined in our schema. You can just confirm it's the same column names. And uh, for values, this, uh, these are just like placeholders so that for creating that, it will get a certain, um, a certain uh, value. So these are just placeholders. Then, so this is a, just an SQL query, and uh, we want our data to fall on these rows. No, no, no. Up to row 15. I'm not quite sure what this line does. 
Oh yeah, so uh, since our, the data that we'll be passing is the CSV, and uh, what this does is uh, for every row, the first uh, the first value, the one, the first index will be the created at, the second index, the source, the third index. So this is just specifying the indexes of these values. Yeah, then we do a cursor. We execute, we execute the query, then we do a connection and commit our query to the database. <laughs> So I think with that, with that, we'll be done with inserting our data to the database. And uh, I think this next part should be like a select statement. Get select all from this, is just a, an execute fetch. So yeah, connection, CASA, we said connection is to the database, CASA is for the queries. I hope that's clear by now. And the field names and uh, this is just, uh, fetch from the database okay so we were defining this is just a pipeline we were defining the functions we'll be using and the only way to make this run is by having the main function down here and what this does is just create a database this has been defined the name to it we have uh, this database we have to we have oh no we have an, the emoji db this is another function we did up there we did the create tables and then now we pass our data frame so for this case i used the clean fintech data on uh, the I think the tuesday folder you can just go ahead and use um, the economic twitter data dot csv that you've created from the other tasks and uh, we insert to tweet table, tweets, and uh, we insert this specific table. At the end of this uh, file, you'll just receive a number of uh, data inserts. You can see from my console output on the right, this is just what happened, data inserts. Data inserted successfully, data inserted successfully. So depending on the number of rows, this can actually take some time. The clean fintech data was only three MPs and uh, this is all the rows we had so it might actually take some time when doing the economic twitter data so just be patient as long as it's doing data instead of successfully one row is successful then the rest will be successful as well and uh, that would mark the end of our tutorial um Anastasia? yes uh, so i had my end up uh, you didn't see it uh, if you can go back to the code a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you go back to the way you add the passwords, and I, I, okay. I mean, someone I was asking about it, so I, I thought maybe I would add that, you know, this is a demo, right? So that's why you are storing the password in plain text. But normally, if you're going to you know, deploy, uh, you know, this code somewhere uh, in a running system, you may want to store the, the user uh, password, user username and password in a more secret location, maybe in a configuration file uh, or, or somewhere else where you don't commit, right? So if you're going to be committing to GitHub, you don't commit such uh, sensitive information. Um, other people who are, you know, uh, very serious about security, you might even want to hash the password and, and username so that, you know, uh, you know, if there's an intruder, they're not able, even if they get hold of the, te the, the plain text, but it's encrypted, so they won't be able to, to uh, you know, compromise your, your systems. So that's just something that I just wanted to add to, to add to say, you know, this is because it's a demo, but if you are running this thing in, in production, you want to put your username and password in a more, much more secure uh, location. <laughs> Thank you, Musa Hakati. <laughs> okay, any other question, any other contribution? Who has been able to run? Maybe someone who had their MySQL set. It'd be nice to have someone with a successful run. Anyone? Okay, so I guess you can just do after this. I think I've shared everything you'd need. 
uh, you won't get any blocker. <laughs> if you do, you can just uh, share it in the Slack group or maybe reach out. So any other question, any other concern we can raise before we end this tutorial? Okay, let me ask a question from what we started. Uh, okay, we have Daisy, we have Daisy again. Daisy. Okay, um, just one last question. Could you go back to um, your download so that I can see which file you're opening to be able to access the uh, workbench? Uh, pardon, so see which file? The SQL workbench from your SQL files, because I don't know it's important. So to downloads or uh, to the folder? To the folder, the folder of the download. Um, what file are you opening to be able to see my SQL workbench? Is that clear? Oh, okay. To see my SQL workbench after installing mm -hmm. after installing my SQL, you just go to start, and uh, you'll have my SQL. So I just searched my SQL, and there it is, my SQL workbench. It's just an application that you install to your machine. Okay, I think I may have downloaded the wrong file. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, any other question before I ask mine? No question. Okay. Then, uh, yes, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting an error. Um, maybe I think it's because I changed uh, a data set that I'm putting in SQL. So I don't know, maybe if you can share uh, a FinTech CSV in the same uh, Google Drive folder. Or because okay, I think then... maybe it has something to do with column names and yeah. Oh, OK. Okay, if the column names are different, uh, since you did um, you did uh, edda for your data, you can just go to the SQL and make sure the column names are the same. If you just want to test, if you just want to test if the code runs, the fintech data is on the Tuesday folder. The fintech oh. data is on the Tuesday folder. Tuesday. Yeah, we have cleaned fintech data in the Tuesday folder. Okay, we I will use that first. You can just test with the fintech data, but also be sure to give it a try with the economic Twitter data. Just make sure the columns, uh, the the schema, and the data match. Yeah, thank you. Okay. We had Shikoni. Shikoni had raised. Uh, um. Okay. Hi. Yeah. What's up? Good morning. Um. Morning. Thank you. Sorry. So this ask. Uh, a question at one at what point do we get to um integrate with the database is it um because i kind of like don't, don't fully understand how or why we need the sql so when we have our data and then we we have the clean data then what's the reason for putting it in um in, in sql or or storing this in the database I think yeah, that's the question. Okay, that's a good question. So I'd just say it's basically for storage. I don't know if anyone has a more precise. This is a data needs to be stored well so that it can be accessed by anyone and everyone. In many applications, the data you have, uh, it's nice to have it in a structured. Musa, you can go ahead. <coughs> Yeah, so maybe I, I can add. So when we are training our modules, um, usually we are using files, right? Uh, but if you want to store the results of the prediction, right? Imagine you've stored that result in a file, uh, but you, are, you have a system that you've deployed, which is being used all over the world, right? So you can have um, your system querying the same file, right? 
because with the database, you can have multiple connections to the database. So you are able to, to return the results to a lot of users. But if you are storing the results in a file, you won't be able to do that, um, you know, because of maybe, you know, file locks that you have to do or, you know, you can't have multiple reads, or maybe there's conflicts with multiple reads and multiple writes. So in a single file, you can't do that. But databases have the mechanisms, you know, where, you know, there's a way that, you know, they allow you to be able to read uh, multiple times and write multiple times without conflicts. So that's why, you know, even though you build your, 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 your models using text files, CSVs, et cetera, you know, when you, you 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 get your results. You send them to a database so that they can be accessed and queried uh, all over the world. So that that allows you to to do that. It's scalability, basically. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks so much. I appreciate you understand. Okay, and just to add on, if you the pursue data engineering. Your work could mainly be to prepare the data, what you've been doing throughout the week. Then the data, you can now store it in a database and let now the other team to continue. So it's uh, basically making the connection between the teams easier. Instead of them accessing now your files on your local machine, when you have a common storage, it will be easier for your other team members. OK, thanks so much. I understand. I guess it will. Okay, so I think that uh, should answer Tadele as well uh, from your messages on message. Tadele, is that okay? Ishak Tadele. So I think uh, when you have a problem with a distribution and the SQL, not that uh, SQL cannot handle distribution, you can have um, a number, a number of distributed systems, just that when it is too large, it might be a little bit um, tough, and that's why you need to explore databases like uh, NoSQL. Victor? Okay, um, good morning. Um, fine, fine. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, my question is uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can. I can hear you. All right. Uh, my question is that uh, this uh, what is the, um, the relationship between the task and the deliverables? Now, you, you, you are doing uh, a tutorial on uh, SQL. And then I know we have to um, work with it, uh, put our data frame that we've cleaned into the SQL um, server, and also probably build a, uh, a web app or anyone who wants to use, whether using uh, Flask uh, framework or Streamlit. But uh, on our deliverables, we are told to just um, do the model, topic modeling as just the minimal part of it. So submit. So um, if if uh, I, I, my question is that uh, is it compulsory to do all other tasks also in week zero, or it's just the ones that uh, that are deliverables that we are told to work on or deliver at that specific moment? Okay, thank you, Victor. So uh, the purpose of this week uh, was to take you through like a sample, a summary of what goes on through the entire program. We might find a week where we are only dealing with uh, data engineering, a week we are only dealing with uh, one specific concept, but the purpose of this week was to take you through most of the concepts that will be handled through the program. That's why you see that it is more diverse. About the deliverable, the deliverable just asks you for maybe a brief description or maybe a code base. If you can do what you've been taught throughout the week, that would be excellent. And you might find in rubrics if someone has done a, um, a database, a, a dashboard with Streamlit, has dockerized the environment, uh, you'd find maybe that is extra. It is not uh, 
required that you do everything, but uh, if you actually attempt everything that you've been taught, that is extra and uh, it will be better for you. But uh, the deliverable is actually simple because uh, we just need you to understand the concept. So if you can actually do everything, it will be an additional benefit to you. Is that okay, Victor? All right, all right. Um, thank you so much, also. And um, also, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Also, if uh, is there a deadline for the task? If uh, to do the task, because um, normally the 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 uh, kickoff is just for five days, as from Monday to Friday. So if um someone wants to still continue the task, probably tomorrow or Monday. Uh, is the person still uh, uh, allowed to do so, or is there a specific time or deadline whereas you cannot uh, make any progress on the data you are given or on the task you are given? Okay, so the other the other benefit from this week pro program from this week assessment is that anyone who wants to be able to pro to proceed to the main program has access to most of this data. So the fact that you're working with your own GitHub, you already have the files. You can continue practicing. If you don't make it to the main program and maybe try next time, you'll have more knowledge. So you have the files, the GitHub is in uh, your repo on your own. Um, yeah, you are in charge of your repo, so you can just do it any other time. All right, man. thank you so much. Okay, any other question? So Prince, I see you're asking about when uh, will the video be uploaded. Normally it's uh, the following day, so that will be tomorrow. Okay, Prince, just... Uh... Okay, so uh, if it's going to be uploaded, say, tomorrow, is there any resource that, uh, you know, I can use to follow up, any recommended resource that I could use to follow up or catch up on what I missed? Everything I've done on this tutorial is in the Friday folder. Everything. I have not uh, used any other material from um, outside. Maybe I shared a YouTube link on uh, a few prerequisites, how you'll need to do my SQL database on your machine first. But every other file is on the on the Friday folder. We have the two presentations, friends. We have the two presentations, the technologies and the schema. We have the SQL, which defines the schema, and we have the add data, which connects now our schema with our code. I hope that will be okay. Yeah, that will be enough. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so I'd like to end there. If uh okay, need just need just the last one. You just uh it's from the simple can you can you hear me yeah i can hear you Nijus. hello all right so it's from the simple task uh, question the instagram and twitch stuff right so uh, the 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 common variable <clears throat> they have is the rich score right yes the re the remaining variables are not this i mean the the remaining two matrix uh, are only for the Twitter stuff. So, how are we going to use the rich score only in order to compare, like, uh, their performance, or do we need to use the remaining two metrics to compare them? Okay, so that comparison has been left open ended. The simple task was just to be a, an exciting task for this week. If you think the popularity score and the relevance score would actually help in um, 
in coming in getting to your insights then uh, you can use the tool all right so do we do we need to use a math look leave in order to show the like the, their comparison like if if we can uh, work on the rich score only yeah you can definitely use plots all right so ca can we use the three matrix with like we, we can also plot the three matrix of the tweet and uh, one variable from the instagram so ca can we put four of them like i mean yeah or four yes graphs? yes you can do that maybe uh just um a hint if you actually think that if you had popularity score and uh, relevant re score from Instagram, if you think that would help uh, derive your insights more, you can just mention it because you're supposed to support your your answer. You can just mention it. And uh, since, uh, like, for example, the popularity score, the way it's calculated in uh, Twitter, you've been given the formula. So how do you think we calculate it in Instagram? You can just give it more. Uh, mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. can I say? Yeah. Maybe like so if you're can... going to extend, if you're going to extend this task, I would suggest do this. All right. So uh, where are I mean, where are we gonna post that? Like in the LinkedIn, in the Twitter, like where is the proper place to post it? You'd post in Twitter. At the end, you'd just post in Twitter. I'll uh, talk to Abdullahi and see if we can uh, add uh, an assignment of you just uploading your Twitter link, your post link. Uh, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, I just post it on Twitter. If you just post it on Twitter, we can just I can pull everyone who has posted because we are using the hash. You're using a specific hashtag that is not being used by any other post. So I can just, we can just pull those who have posted. All right, so if you, if I post it with hashtag Tain Academy, you can access that, right? Yes, I can access your post. All right, thank you. Okay, Biniam, then we close. I think I have another meeting. Biniam. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you first for, for giving me this chance uh, to be part of this program. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, when will be when will we be notified of uh, our results, the selection results? Will it be tonight, uh, along with the leaderboards, uh, or uh, will it be tomorrow, or any other day? Okay. So I cannot provide a clear answer to that. I just know that uh, the leaderboard, I just know that the invites to interviews uh, may be sent tomorrow. Um, the schedule for the interviews have not yet been rolled out, but maybe next week. But the invitations to interview interviews may be tomorrow. About the leaderboard, because you still have to do tonight's submission, so maybe earliest tomorrow as well okay thank you hey anastasia quick okay. one i don't think you saw the you saw the question i wrote it in chat i uh, was i was distracted for a moment and i, I didn't get what you said about the deliverables today uh, do we deliver this uh on is there an, an sql deliverable today the topic you just explained. Okay, so, okay, so I see the deliverable is just a brief description of your codes and uh, the GitHub link. So if you have the SQL code in your GitHub, it might be helpful to your mark because it's, it has not been specific on what to deliver. So what you've done in your GitHub, if it's the SQL, if it's just the modeling, then uh, it might add to your marks. So just uh, just go all in and do all you can before the submission. We, we will still have the Streamlit and Dockerization uh, tutorials uh, before the end of the day. 
where you'll be taught about uh, dashboards and uh, deployment. So if you incorporate most of this in your, in your code, I know it will be helpful to you. But it's not specific that you need to yes. do SQL for these deliverables, yeah. Yeah, I understand. But you're basically saying it will help uh, to incorporate the doing the tasks that are mentioned under task four, right? In the yes, I can. Yes, I can give an example of uh, one of the one of the deliverables you are asked to just do a GitHub link, and uh, you'd notice that if you interacted more with your repo, if you had a, a number of commits, if you had you did pull request, you did issues, you did projects if you really interacted with their repo you'd notice that maybe you have a higher score than if you didn't interact with poll requests if you didn't interact with issues so the point is just uh, engage with the content engage with the platform very well understood very clear thank you very much anesthesia okay michael tamiri okay thank you yeah can you hear me Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yeah, it, it's because the 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 message that you are giving us, and if you can go to the week zero uh, document, the deliverable is being changed by uh, it's Yababal is changing it. I'm confused. That's why. Can you go to the deliverable? It's changed. I'm it's changed confused. at the moment. Yeah, I'm I'm confused. That's why. So this deliverable is asking task four and five. You see? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if the deliverable is being changed, just follow the document. I don't think I would have noticed this change. Yeah. My yesterday also, so. uh, we were told that we were not supposed to do task four and five. Now it's being changed. It's just because I'm getting confused. With that's why. So uh, you'd notice that like task four is the deployed uh, dashboard. Which, oops, which I think uh, you'd be taught on stream late this afternoon. And uh, so if the deliverable has been changed, then uh, just step up. I did <laughs> notice there was a change. Michael, thank you for informing the rest. Just follow the deliverable on uh, the document. OK, OK. Thank you. Musa, Musa, let's wrap up, Musa. Yeah, no, I just want to add quickly that uh, from, I think, initially, what Yabat Bell was saying in terms of the tasks is it's a best effort uh, type of thing, right? It's it's what you can do. So if you feel that you're not able to do tasks four and five, then that's fine. It's about your best effort. So there are other people who may have completed uh, all the other tasks except for four and five. So that's mostly for them so that they can have other things that they can add, right? So it's your best effort. That's what it's about. Okay. So I think we can end there. It's been an hour. And uh, it was nice to have you guys for this week. I'm hoping to see most of you when the program starts and for those who want to be able to see we hope to see you another time this is a process it takes time uh, don't give up on the process so thank you if i be here in the meeting i think we can end the call have a nice day anesthesia thank you very and much. nice day to you guys